Hey guys, I want to introduce you to the new SharePoint Framework web part for Stratus Forms. With this web part, you'll be able to now create your SharePoint forms in both modern and classic pages uh, within a SharePoint site. So I just want to jump in and show you guys how to use this web part, and then we'll kind of take a, a deeper look into some of the, the pieces of it. Uh, so here I have in SharePoint Online, a, a modern team site. I've just created it from scratch. There's nothing been added to it. It's just a modern team site. The other thing I've already done is I took the app package for the web part, for the Stratus Forms web part, and I've uploaded it to my app catalog and I've deployed it to my tenant. So I can now use this web part on my sites. So here I'm in my site. Uh, the first thing I need to do is I need to create a list that is going to be used to store those forms. So I am going to go over here and we are going to add an app and we are going to create a list. So we'll create a custom list and we'll call this list my cool list. And we'll add that. And now we're ready to create forms for it. So let's go back to our home page or you can create a new page, but we need a page to put the Stratus Forms web part on to create our form. So let's just go ahead and edit the home page here. And I'm going to insert a web part right here and we're going to be looking for that Stratus Forms web part that I, again, have uploaded to the Gap catalog and deployed. So add the Stratus Forms web part. It's popping up a little message for us here to let us know we need to edit the properties because it's not been configured yet. So this web part is in beta. Uh, it's probably pre-beta, really. I just got it working. So I want you guys to play with it and, and start using it. Let me know what you think about it. Um, but what we want to do is we want to now edit the properties of this web part and we need to give it some parameters. The first thing we need to do is say which list are these forms for. And the name of that list we just created was my cool list. And then here's another entry for the HTML for your SharePoint form. So I've got some pre-baked HTML over here. And this is, it's a lot of HTML, so it's a really big form, but this is just plain HTML and CSS. There's nothing special about this. There's nothing SharePointy about this. Straight HTML. The only thing that you do need to do with Stratus Forms is you need to make sure that the IDs of all your elements are unique. You cannot repeat IDs for your elements, and your elements must have IDs. Finally, the other thing I had to do to this form uh, that was that is unique to the SharePoint Framework web part for Stratus Forms is I had to give my submit button a class of Stratus Forms submit button. So whatever element you use in your form to submit the form, whether someone clicks on a div or a span or a button or something, you have to make sure it has a class of Stratus Forms submit button. And the SharePoint Framework web part attaches to that element, and when somebody clicks it, it's going to submit that form to that list name that you specify. So I'm just taking this HTML, I'm copying it, and I'm going to paste it here into the form HTML, and then we'll save that. There's a few other uh, uh, properties here that you can edit. One of them is called the Edit Form Script, and this is if you want to edit the actual JavaScript used in your form. So if you have additional business logic you want to execute, when someone clicks a button, maybe you want to call us a user profile web services, whatever extra business logic you want to do, you can paste it in here. And these other two boxes you'll see, one of them says the init script. So this is script that gets executed after the form is done initializing. Sometimes you want to do some post-processing after the form has been loaded. Uh, so this script does not get executed until the form is done initializing. There's a default alert in there that gets added as the default value, and it's just going to alert up a message box saying uh, init complete. There's also a text box here for the submit script. And this is saying, what do you want to do after the form has been saved? Do you want to take the users to a different page? Do you want to pop up a message? Uh, and the default, default script here is just going to pop up a message saying the save was successful. And then it's going to navigate the user uh, back to the, it's going to reload the page uh, using the ID of the form that was just saved and basically just reload the page. But you can change this script to say, what do you want to do when the form is done saving? So we've got all that applied. Now I can just click on the apply button. You can see we get that little pop-up saying init complete because that part of the script executed. And we can see our form on the page. So I'll go ahead and just publish this page. You can, again, it, sees, it says init complete. And here's our form. So we now have a form in our modern page 
uh, in SharePoint. And we can now uh, use this in the SharePoint app. We can now make this really nice and mobile and responsive if we want to. And we can go through and fill it out. So we can put in some information in here. So let me put in some information, put in the auditor name, put in my name, Mark, shift number three. Uh, product code, should put some numbers in there. We can go through here and select some radio buttons, select some of these checkboxes. See, this is a huge, massive form. How would you ever create this form with another form technology? That's one of the reasons I really like this, because you can make some massive forms with Stratus Forms. And we'll go through and we will click on the Submit button to create this entry. It's telling us to save was successful, and again, that's because of the script I had on that Submit script, and it's going to reload the page for us. So when the page reloads, you can see that that form is still there. Tell us then it is complete. And those fields are all filled in on the form. So there's our checkboxes and those entries that we added. So if we go over and look at that list we created, that My Cool list, if we take a look at that and we go to the settings for that list, you will see that there's now an additional field in this list called Stratus Forms Data. Uh, previously with Stratus Forms, you had to manually create this field, but because of the framework web part, uh, it detects if that field doesn't exist before it tries to save the form or load the form, and it creates that field for you automatically. So that saves you a step there. If we go look at the, the My Cool List entry, and we modify this view so that we show that data. So let's modify that view, select the Stratus Forms data field and we can see that entry got created. So here's all the form data gets stored in the Stratus Forms data field. But you'll notice the title field is blank because we did not promote that any data to that title field. Because if you remember with Stratus Forms, it works a little bit like InfoPath in that you can create a form with hundreds of fields but only promote a few to a uh, list in your SharePoint list. So if we wanted to promote a field to the title field, uh, let's do that real quick so you can see how that works. It works the same way it's always worked with Stratus Forms. Uh, you find the field that you want to promote. In this case, let's look at the product code field. And let's say we want to promote that to the title field in our list. So I can create this attribute called list field name and set its value equal to title. And now I can take this same script Let's edit our page again. So go back to that home page. And let's edit the page. Let's edit the properties. And I'm going to get rid of that annoying init complete message. So let's go ahead and just delete that. And now I'm going to overwrite the HTML with that same HTML that has that list field name equal to title to promote the field. Now we'll save that, apply it and we will publish the page. So now if I create a new entry, let's create another one, and let's give it a product code of fours, and let's go down here and save this form. It tells us the form ID was two. We see that the form reloads with those values that we have in there, and if we go back and look now, at the My Cool list, you see that the title field has that value 44444 because we promoted it. And we can go back to that other entry that didn't have the promoted field. Let's reload that first one now. And here's our first entry with the 3333. And now if I just go back and save this form and look at our list in SharePoint, you can see that, that got promoted to 33333, okay? So that's pretty much all there is to it. So all you have to do now to create a form of Stratus Forms is to create your list, add the web part to a page, put your HTML in there for, the, uh, for your form, and make sure your submit button has a class of Stratus Forms-submit button. And that's all you have to do, and it'll just work. There's a couple of quirks at the web part that I will make sure I document on the Stratus Forms website, and most of that is around using the people pickers in the modern pages. So there's a couple extra steps you have to take to get that to work. But otherwise, whatever forms you create for your classic page will work also in the modern pages. You'll be able to take those scripts you've been writing for uh, a while now with Stratus Forms if you've been using it for a while, and you can use those immediately uh, in your modern sites.
like I said, play with it. Let me know your thoughts. And thanks.